Okay, we're back for part two of What a Beautiful Name It Is. This is where we start covering the rhythm and going through the total progression of this song and getting ready to actually play the song in the next video. All right, so now let's go back to what we were talking about really, really quickly in our chords, covering our chords in the first verse. But this time, let's actually put it to a progression, okay? So the actual song of this starts, and I'll kind of flow with it. The first count of D... And let me get rid of some of my scribble over here. The first progression, the first uh, note D is going to get four counts. And I'm looking at this G, B minor and A. The G is going to get a count, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint that this B minor right here, that is going to be a passing chord. So we're going to move and transition very quickly from that B to the A. Okay. And that's why I said on your last video, be sure you have this pivot and these transitions down because before you start playing the song, you want to have good technique. Remember, it's not about speed. It's about technique. Okay? So if we start playing the song, we'll start really, really slow. A one, two, ready, play. I'll say, you were the word at the beginning. Two three one that g to the b minor two then a three four so let's do that much again one two ready play a d chord d chord you were the word at the beginning two three four g count for two bars one two b for two one Two, then on A for four, one, two, three, four, back to B minor, one, two, passing chord, A over C, two, three, four. So let's go in and actually mark down our passing chords really quickly. So we have a B minor. That's a passing chord. This A over C is a passing chord. Um, you can kind of put this G as a passing chord, but it's kind of not because we still need that G chord to give us uh, another change in the in the song. So let's play it again, but just where I have these marks, just keep in mind they're not going to get the full four beats or actually eight beats like this D chord did, does at the at the beginning okay so one more time let's go uh from the top one two ready play a d so d two three the word at the beginning two three one that got g b minor to a a two three b minor Passing chord, A over C, back to D, two. Let's keep going. Back to G, B minor, and then the A. And one more thing, very nice, very nice. You notice that the B, I mean the G, B minor, and A right here is the exact same thing as this G, B minor, and A. They get the same amount of beats. It's the same exact chord progression and inversions, okay? So one more time, let's actually play this whole first verse uh, together right now, okay? One, two, starting from the D. Ready, and play. Here we go. And D, two, three, four. One more time. Two, three, Four, two, a G for two counts, two, B minor, two counts, then an A, one, two, three, B minor, and my bad, and the A on C, two, three, four, two, a G, one, two, two counts, and then an A, one, two, three, four, all right, very nice. All right, so let's keep moving on. Now that we have that, once again, if you're not quite ready, 
We're not actually playing the whole song yet, so if you're still kind of working on these chords, just pause the tape and pick up where you re when you're ready, because um, we're now going to the chorus. So it's a good time to pause the tape if you're not ready to move on to the chorus. But if you're ready, let's move on. And we have, look at these chords we have here. We have the same D, A, B minor, A, and G. So this is going to be pretty simple, right? We're assuming. So let's just play it. What a beautiful name it is. D, two, three, to the A, the name, to the B minor, two, those are just passing chords, two, three, four, that's how we sound. So remember, or we'll just make a note that this B and this A right here, these are still just little passing chords. So they move quick. So when you're reading the lead sheets, it gives us the lyrics below it to kind of help us out. But that's why it's good to go through the song and see what are my passing chords, what are not, because none. it's not like in the other lead sheet where we have the bars and we know exactly how to count. Okay, so I'm trying to break this down so you understand how to read these lead sheets uh, very easily. Okay, so let's do the chorus actually one more time. Excuse me there. Let's do the chorus one more time. Get rid of these notes. What a beautiful name. One, two, on the chorus. Ready? What a beautiful name. It is D. Two, what a beautiful name. To the A, the name of G's. B minor, A, to the G. Let's do that again from the top. One. Two, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name to the A. The name of Jesus Christ, my to the G. All right. And check this out. Now, from the G, we're going to go to a D over F sharp. Hmm. Now, the question is, How do I do it? We're just sliding up one note right here. So our left hand goes to an F sharp. And we're just going to play that D chord again. Again. That's actually a cool chord. You'll hear these type of chords a lot in, um, in contemporary Christian type music and worship songs. Okay. So remember this chord. So we have the D over F, and then that will get us right back to remember that pivot to the A. And then from there is the rest of the chorus we know is just walking up that B minor, back to the A, that pivot, back to G. Okay. So let's do, let's start at the F sharp. Um, actually, let's go from the top again. Let's just I think you got it. So let's just work together very, very slowly. Once again, before we put the rhythm in, let's give each chord four beats just to make sure we have the whole progression. Starting on the chorus. Ready? One, two. What a beautiful name it is. D, two, three, four. To the A, two, three. B minor, four counts. One, two, three, four. To an A, four counts. Two, three to a G four counts one two D over F four counts sorry four counts to an A two three to a B minor two three four to an A four counts two three four and then a G four counts two three four all right and now you see Kind of like I did, I kind of messed up going to that D over F. So what I would do, I would actually go to the chord before that, which was the G, and then I'll just practice, okay, going to the D over F. Did I do that or did I do that? Okay, I see I put the middle finger there because it's kind of confusing that B minor's in here. You know, the D, they're kind of similar. It's just one note that changes those two chords. So let me just practice, okay, the G, I got my G, B, D. 
and all I need to do is change two notes now, okay? My F sharp and my A. And that gives me a D chord, okay? So that's what I would do in case you're wondering, okay, how do I practice these chords? That's all you have to do is figure out where you're messing up, where you're kind of stumbling, and just go back to it. G to F sharp, D over F sharp. Now when I do the same progression, I got it. I got it because I practiced it real quick, okay? And it's not about speed, guys. Rem remember, that was not fast. I didn't just fly through this course. I did it very slow, gave each uh, chord four counts, and I still stumbled on one little area. So that means I still had improvement to make before I go into the just flying through this stuff, okay? So now that we have that, we've worked on our chord, now let's actually play the chorus to the progression of the song, okay? So we're going to remember our passing chords. We're going to remember our four counts, our techniques, our G to the F sharp, D over F sharp, all of those things, muscle memory, everything, okay? So here we go together. One, two, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name to the A. The name of B minor, passing chord to A, passing chord to G. Two, what a beautiful name it is. D over F sharp, nothing compares to A. What a beautiful name to B minor. The name of G. So let's, let's do it again. What a beautiful name to the top is D. What a beautiful name it to A. The name of B minor. Passing chord to the A. Passing chord to a G. What a beautiful name. D over F sharp. Nothing compares to my A. <laughs> what a beautiful name. B minor. The name A to a G. All right. Very nice job. That's a quick way of testing. Am I ready to move on to the next part? And if you are, you pretty much have the entire song. Because if we go to the next part of the song, there's a tag here. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a tag on your uh, PDF sheet you have. But then we have an instrumental part. Okay. And there's a couple ways. I'll show you two ways. I'll, I'll show you two ways to play this. The simple way first is to play the chorus we've been playing, just the root position to a G. Actually, we'll go G to an A to a B minor and to an F sharp. And really, an F sharp minor seven, guys, a trick. A F sharp minor, which I covered this in volume two. The seven is actually just my A chord again, but I just have an F sharp in the bass. And the one way you can always find your minor sevens is you take the, the minor seven, which is the F sharp. And you go to the minor third. You learn all this, but you go to the minor third and you make a major chord out of it, okay? And all I did was invert that major chord to an A in the middle and put the F sharp on my bass. And that's how you get an F sharp minor or any minor seven, okay? F sharp minor seven. So on the instrumental part, they're just building. They have the G holding for four counts then an a hold it for four counts remember that a uh position muscle memory because that's the same as f sharp right so we have the g two three four then an a one two three four b minor two three then f sharp again let's play that together ready Play. We have a G chord, two, three, four, my A chord, two, three, four, B minor, seven, two, three, four, the F sharp minor, seven, two. Let's play it again. Let's build it with a little rhythm. To an A, 
you see how it starts building to a B minor seven. Let's do it one more time. Death could not hold you. Bell tore before you. You signed the most sin and grave. That's how it goes. One more time, then we build more. F sharp right here we go to an A so basically we go back to a A chord and when we're coming out since we're going up in the song instead of going back to an A in the middle I would recommend that we go to an A root position it just sounds like we're going up right versus this right here Right? It sounds like we're going back down, kind of like the F sharp. So when we're coming out and we see at the end, whenever you know the, the lyrics or whenever your choir director bring you out of that part, make sure you come out and take the audience or the listener somewhere by playing that A right there. Remember, the other ones up here end on the F sharp. But it's the, the composer did a very nice job of giving us that A right there. So it lets us know we're going somewhere. And where are we going? We're going back to the chorus. What a beautiful name it is. And what I would do coming out of that part, I would play everything exactly the same, but instead of playing it down low, just play in your right hand an octave higher. So coming in that chorus, we're just going to play what a... So coming out of the instrumental, uh, the bridge, Death could ready. Let's play together. One, two. Death could not hold. Fell to a four. So we'll play this twice. So we're kind of building already. Let's go back to the F sharp right here. F sharp over A. Let's build the last time out. So let's build it hard right here. A in the root position. What a beautiful name it is. So I'm in here, top just rhythm now. What a beautiful name it is. The name. You see how I'm playing? Beautiful name it is. Nothing compares. What a beautiful. And if we do the course again, I might build. Right here, right here, and then I just, what a beautiful name. Back to the same thing, playing octaves in my left hand with a little rhythm. What a beautiful name. And what a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to, see how I'm just playing rhythm, same chord progression just moving my left hand with octaves and this they toggle that B minor the A again so I, I might build it oh Jesus what a beautiful last time we break it down of the name of Jesus and from there you can go into your trills and I'm just playing an octave right there and just a little trills in my left hand. That will give the worshiper or you or whoever time to flow into the next uh, part of the service. All right. So this is a quick kind of overview. Well, not necessarily quick, but this is an overview of the entire song. Now, one one more little thing I want to give you. And this is kind of a, a little trick you'll hear a lot in um, worship music, contemporary Christian music. It's a lot of sus chords. So. When you have this G right here, for example, this G chord will normally play, uh, let me get my thing, will normally play the notes that are in the G chord. Now, I don't want to confuse you with anything, but this would just give you a little bit more flavor. Now, when we play a G chord, normally the chords in a G 
uh, chord are G, B, and D, right? But on worship music, they like to do a lot of sus chords. So they'll keep that G and that B there, that three. So this technically is a one, uh, one, three, and five, right? We have our one, one, two, three, four, five, one, three, five, right? So what worship music does a lot is they substitute that three and play a two, right? So that now gives me a G, A, and a D, okay? So now that takes away this right here and that three, and we plug that in with the A, and that gives us a two right there. And that will give you kind of a G that is called a G sus okay we're sussing suspending the two now they have like a sus for I mean some other stuff but I just want to give you a quick little trick that you can do on this song whenever you see that G chord now you might not want to overdo it but let's say for example uh, let's go to the instrumental part after we coming out of the course we can do death death uh, death could not hold you right the veil before right and say we're building the ungraves I'm gonna go, don't go to a sus this time listen to the difference you hear the difference let me play it again two three going to a G chord regular listen to a sus hear that difference in there you remember how we did the ear training uh where we went to noticing the difference between a major and a minor chord well you want to start advancing your ear a little bit and noticing the g chords and the g sus now you could do that with several different chords you can do it with a c chord a c sus you know a f chord you know those are some of the easier chords but just remember in this song this is a more worship uh, you're sustaining notes a little bit. It's kind of free flowing. So when you see that G chord, you can actually play that sus and it sounds amazing. All right. So keep that in mind. We're going to go in our next video and actually play through the entire song. Uh, give all the rhythms and everything so you can get a good example of uh, how to play this song live. Okay. So meet me on the next video, guys. Good job.